Good morning. Delighted to be with you. Thank you so much for having me. I've got a, a great presentation, and we're at a great place. And the question is, is it a good time? Um, is it a good time to be an investor? Um, we have, we have, uh, we had. Uh... Oh, okay. All right. Good. All right. Good. The question is, is it a good time to be an investor? And I'm here to tell you it is, a, it is a great time to be an investor. I'm going to come out so I can actually see the slides. All right, good. It's a great time to be an investor. I'll tell you briefly a bit about myself. As was mentioned, I'm actually a professional investor. I've run a private investment partnership since 2000. I started way back in the day uh, on the floor of the Chicago Board of Trade. Actually, it was a, a floor trader back when they used to scream and shout and yell, et cetera, like that. I'm also a Fox News analyst, so you might have seen me from time to time uh, debating with Stephen Moore or Peter Schiff or any, uh, one, of, one of our wonderful speakers today. I actually also have a new book out today, uh, so I'll be signing this afternoon after my presentation at 1.30. It's about a, a subject I think we all are pretty passionate about, America. It's called Textbook of America. It's available at textbookofamericanism.com. Um, but today, we're here to talk about how difficult a problem we have here today. I mean, Stephen mentioned a few of them. This is a tough time to be an investor. You've got the trade war. Could be 20 years, Stephen said. This is the epic battle of our time. You've got Trump's impeachment, certainly weighing on markets. That's moved markets. You've got a slowing economy. We know that the trade war is having an effect. Global sales are down. Global hiring is down. You've also got really the real prospects of war in the Middle East. Never been good for stocks, at least historically. Add it all up. I mean, who, I just took a quick show of hands, no judgments here. Who, who agrees with this? I mean, this is, a, this is a difficult time to be an investor. Yeah. Well, you're wrong. You're at the. Well, this is this is a great time to be an investor. This is the best time to be an investor, really ever. And for those, I don't, I don't think no one here is under forty, right? We're all in our mid twenties and thirties. Seems like it. Right. Uh, a brief history lesson on investing. I mean, many of you remember this. I'm going to talk about four major issues here: the cost of investing, the efficiency of investing, the opportunities that we have in investing and where we are in terms of investing. That is uh, America, a wonderful country of capitalism. Let's start briefly with this idea of the cost, uh, because it's changed so dramatically. I'm going to bring you back to the good old 1980s. Uh, you might remember Crockett and Tubbs, uh, I don't know, some diehards, some of the wonderful events of that era. Certainly Ronald Reagan was a big uh, er event of that era. And even back then, it was damn difficult to be an investor. Over at Charles Schwab, and that was the discount brokerage you might remember. Your minimum commission to trade anything was $39. $39 to trade anything. And of course, it went up from there. So if you wanted to trade 100 shares of a medium price stock, $2,400 stock, it cost you $64. $64 to buy 100 shares, $24 worth of stock. And then, of course, you had to sell it again. So this was a real expense, a factor. And I'm sure many of you have been investing for a long time. Remember, this, this was a real factor in terms of investing. Translate that into $2019 of just how cumbersome, how expensive something as minimum as commission was, you know, not too long ago. The 1980s wasn't too long ago. We're talking about $138 for a round turn for $2,400 worth of stock. It just made investing impossible. Now let's fast forward where we are today. I mean, this is amazing. It's free. It's free now. What else can you say about that? What was the cost of a stamp back then? It's only gone up. Commissions are free now, and not just at one discount brokerage. Even this past week, I believe uh, E-Trade or Fidelity was the latest to announce free commissions. This is truly tremendous. And it's part of a long-term trend that we've witnessed for a long time. Commissions have been coming down across the board in terms of trading for years. Now, does anyone remember when that really process really started? Steve mentioned deregulation, and he's spot on. I mean, pretty apparent indication in this graph. Well, of course, when brokerage was deregulated on, they call it May Day in, in 1975. That's when, so wouldn't you love to see this type of regulation in, in our education or in medicine, anything else that is screwed up with our economy? We need that kind of regulation because look, look what it's done for investing. It's, it's made it essentially free. And even for those who use mutual funds, I mean, you pay tenths of a percent to get a basket of professionally managed fund. This is the best time ever, the greatest opportunities ever for us to make money, ever to be an investor. Briefly, we'll talk about efficiency, because that's probably even more demonstrable. I remember 
1988. I mean, I started investing in the late 80s and the early 90s. And if you wanted to do research, what did you do? You went to the library. Remember those? The library. And you, you went to the books and you got that old dusty copy of the Value Line Investment Survey. Remember that one? Is, and looked up, researched a company, and you found a report that was probably printed, I don't know, could have been printed two years ago. I mean, this was not exactly up-to-date information. Or even if you wanted to get a stock price, well, wait till the next morning, see where it closed, open up in the paper, look down. I mean, it, it seems hilarious now, but this wasn't too long ago. Let's fast forward. It's completely different now. Oh, wait a minute, you wanted to buy a stock. All right, let's got to, got to reach in there, find that. I mean, it was even to buy it. And then, of course, when you buy it, they've got to write it down. I mean, think about how markets move in the old days. You've got to write it down on a piece of paper, run it over there. Buy 100 shares for this one, and they charge you hundreds of dollars for that. Oh, and then, of course, they had to send you the physical piece of paper, right, the stock. I mean, some of you might remember that as well. So you had to find a place to safeguard that. This was really cumbersome. This was really not efficient. Fast forward. I mean, it's, it's almost unbelievable the wealth of information that is available at your fingertips. And my God, when I started investing, really in the 90s, you were lucky for 20-minute delayed quotes, right? So it's like, mm, da, 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 wait for the 20 minutes. Now it's all in real time, and of course you buy and sell from your phone with an immediate click. This, this is tremendous efficiency. This is why it is truly the best time ever to be an investor and the greatest opportunities for all of us to make money when it comes to investments. Now, there's been a lot of debate this morning about, you know, is the economy going to be good? Is the economy going to be bad? Questions about, does the market go up? I'm actually here to say it really doesn't matter because we can make money regardless of whether the market goes up or down. This is not a pipe dream, this is a reality, because now there's opportunities that we never had. The, the world is our playground when it comes to investing. Uh, you know, people love to rag on Wall Street, but look at the growth of just ETFs, and this is just seven years. I mean, a 400% growth in ETFs in nine years in terms of the different opportunities, options for us when it comes to investing, where to put our money. And it's not just stocks, of course. It's you know, equities, commodities. I mean, even back in the, the early 2000s, I, you know, I'm a, a, talking about an investment like gold, for example, on Fox. You might remember, it wasn't so easy to get exposure to gold back in the year 2000s. There was a few oddball closed-end funds. You maybe had to have a futures. Now there's innumerable options. This is why, again, it's the best opportunity. And some of these strategies, you, know, you can buy an ETF that sells puts on the S&P 500. You pay maybe a percent. 50 basis points. Unbelievable types of strategies that we just never had, never could participate in. Over at my fund at capitalistpig.com, we've owned the yen pretty successfully this year. Again, this is the type of, you know, and even on Fox, some of the hosts will say, oh, our investors don't, they can't handle the yen. I say, what are you talking about? These people are sophisticated investors. Of course they can handle alternative investments, and there's a lot of money to be made in these ideas. They're all available to now, and that's why it really is the best. Something like the closed end fund fund that owns closed-end funds trading at a discount. An interesting idea for income-oriented investors. New products weren't available. Uh, a hedged emerging markets ETF. New products weren't even available. Again, these types of strategies were never before available. They're commonplace now. They're all about making money for you. So think about where you are now and scratch that from your mind that it's a hard time to be an investor. It really is the best time to be an investor. And the point, as I said, is not beating the market. Uh, the market is all the time in the world, and we've been in a bull market for a long time. Steve mentioned that. It's going on a historic bull market, but the problem is, is that our lifetimes are limited, and people who bought Cisco back in 2000 are still waiting for, to get up to those all time, for waiting. They're in the back working out. Well, people who bought Cisco at those all-time highs are still waiting for it to get back to, to even. People who bought the S&P 500 in, you know, around the turn of the, the century waited 10, 12 years for it to get back to even. So that was, you know, our time horizon is limited. And looking around the room, some of us are more limited than others. Uh, the point is, is that what matters is not beating the market. So look, don't come to this investment category of saying, I need to feel to beat the market. My belief is you focus on you, focus on your own situation, and the goal is making money over time. Whether you do it in the yen or wheat or the, st the stock market, absolute return. This is my mantra. This is what I've you know, do as a hedge fund. The idea is to make money even as the market goes down. We can do it as a hedge fund, and frankly, you can do it as individual investors because of all these strategies, because it is a great time to be an investor. Whether you're short stocks, long commodities, I mean, short the dollar, all these types of strategies and markets are now available. Emerging markets, there's just tremendous, tremendous 
areas to make money that weren't previously available. Actually, I used to own there's a, a royalty trust based on music royalties. You know, I mean, Yakov Smirnov used to say, what a country, and he's right. I mean, this is really tremendous opportunities to make money, compounding over time. Now, I'm going to be talking about a lot of this today at 1.30 at my presentation. I hope you'll, you'll come and join me. We'll talk about a philosophy for investing, basically how to make money in any market, regardless if it's long or short over time. So I hope you'll join me for that, because it's the best time to be an investor. And briefly, I'll just say, thank God, where it's the best place to be an investor. There's, we're in America. We're in Dallas, but we're in America. And there's billions and billions of people in this world. We could have been born by any, as any one of them. Only 4% are Americans. So how lucky are we to have the luxury of living in a country which gives us the opportunity to invest and make money and earn it for ourselves? We were really among the, the luckiest who've ever lived. Rand, Ayn Rand actually talked about this. Americans invented the phrase to make money. Americans always thought of, Amer uh, of wealth as having to be created. Previously, it was all about stealing it, inheriting it, coercing it. But America is the place where fortunes can be made, and they are made day after day after day. And we're going to make them as investors in this coming year in the stock market. We're still the most individualistic, free country in the history of, of the world. I mean, look at these uh, businesses that have just been created in the last 10 years that are now basically part of our everyday lives. I mean, something that we use, and most of them are free. We don't even actually pay for them in terms of those services. Truly only in America. So life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness still protected. And whatever you want to say and rag on America, look at the wealth at the end of the day. $62,000 per capita. Even in glorious socialist Sweden, which they keep telling me so, they don't do as well as they do down here. They don't live as well as they do here, whether it's in Sweden, the United Kingdom, the lower you go down in terms of economic freedom, the worse the population has it, the more misery there is, whether it's in Brazil, whether it's in Egypt, and then for the truly unlucky among us who live in not, totally non-capitalist places of the world where they're still struggling to get by even here in the 21st century. So we have the freedom to think, to make choices, to act, to make money, and to keep the fruits of our labor. And at the Money Show, we're going to have the tools today to become better investors. So it's the best time to be an investor. You guys are at the best place to learn about investing the money show. Have an awesome day and come join me at 1.30. Thank you very much.